Hi, everybody. This is Jen Shaughnessy with The Makeup Podcast. Today, I'm here to talk to you about nails. Um, Reason being because I get acrylic nails done every two weeks. And recently, I actually had one rip off of my finger which hurt more than you could even possibly imagine. It was almost worse than giving childbirth. I was cleaning the sink at the salon and I was doing it very quickly because I was in a hurry and I wasn't really focusing. I was just trying to get out of there and my nail got caught in the drain and it ripped right off my finger. Um, it probably ripped off right away But um, it held on for a couple days, and the the entire time I was trying to avoid it, but I kept hitting it accidentally on things, and then finally, uh, a couple days later, it just just ripped right off. So what I wanted to talk to you is about hygiene standards in the nail industry. The reason I started going to my girl Corey at the salon is because, number one, she is a perfectionist. Everything she does, she gives her all, and everything looks perfect. She takes her time. She follows all of the hygiene requirements by New York State Licensing Division and New York State Health Division, and I've never, ever, ever had any infections or fungus. There's never been any stinging on my nail beds, which should not happen. Now, the reason why my nail beds have never stung or hurt is because she only uses legal product. And what that means is she only uses product that's legal to use in the United States. She doesn't buy off-label brands off of Amazon or eBay or overseas just because they're cheaper. Um, She really doesn't spare any expense when it comes to using her products, which is why her prices are higher. And believe me, like you get what you pay for. I went to another nail salon in my area um, to get an ANC powder dip. And while I was there, the gentleman was on his phone the entire time talking with his daughter. He cut my finger and I started bleeding. Instead of wiping it clean with disinfectant or alcohol or wiping his utensils clean, he continued to talk on the phone. He apologized, wiped the blood off of my finger into my fingernail with a paper towel and then proceeded to finish my manicure and put a top coat on top of the blood stain that was on my fingernail. And the entire time I was completely in shock. Like, is this really happening? Is this what he's really going to do? Then when I went to check out, he noticed that I had cash in my wallet and he told me I had to pay in cash and couldn't use my credit card. And I said, no, this is a business expense. I'm using my credit card. And he gave me a hard time about it. And I left and I was so mad, so mad. I went to the state licensing board and I was going to report him. But then at the last minute, I just decided not to because it's not good karma. But, you know, looking back, I wish I had reported it because since this happened over a year and a half ago, I have heard multiple stories about this same salon that everyone I've talked to has had a bad experience. Um, They're either rude or mean, or they just don't do a good job, or their nails break off two days later, or their nails don't stay on and they lift really bad. And this is because of hygiene standards not being followed, so their products are contaminated and they're not working properly, and they're probably buying off-market illegal products and using them. And those also, you know, you never know what you're going to get. They could be expired. They could be watered down. They could have something else mixed in them that is not preserving the product properly. So these are things that you should be thinking about if you are getting your nails done or you're thinking about getting your nails done. You always want to make sure that you are looking at reviews, asking around, asking people you know who get their nails done, where they go, if they've ever had any infections, if they have lifting issues, um, just anything you can get on a place you're thinking about going. You can also look at your state's licensing board website and look up the salon or the person you're thinking about going to, see if they've had any complaints on them. Um, 
because then if they have, you can read the complaints and see what they are. You know, a lot of times people will complain and there's nothing really to complain about. But other times people will complain and there really is something to complain about. So it's, it's kind of like reading a Yelp review or a Facebook review. Sometimes people get too personal and, you know, they write a nasty review. But what they're mad about really has nothing to do with the person that they're writing the review for. So just take into consideration, like how personal it sounds, or if it really sounds like it's a negative review. Um, the pricing is something that should be a red flag. If someone's prices are like $25, number one, they either don't know enough about business to know that their product cost should be more than that. Um, unless they're a student and they're just starting out, that's a, that's a good price for a student who's like still in school. But when I was talking with my girl, Corey, you know, one thing to keep into consideration is you get what you pay for. I know I just mentioned it, but if you're paying $25 for a nail service, you're going to get a $25 nail service. And it's either going to be that they're just starting out and they are not experienced. So you're going to have to work with them through their learning curve or, um, they are using illegal and cheap products because they just want um, a high turnover very quickly and then they don't really care too much about their clients. So you definitely want to make sure that whatever your expectations are, are met through your pricing. If you have high expectations like I do and you expect your nails to be perfect and flawless and not lift and not break off, um, you're going to pay anywhere from 45 to $75 for a full set. And then anywhere from $35 to $55 for a fill. Plus, you're going to want to pay 20% on top of that for your tips, so that's something you have to budget. And you should also know how your nails grow. For instance, I can go two weeks and that's it. My nails will start lifting. If I go any more than that, they're going to pop off. My BFF Susie can go for three weeks because she likes to get a new set every time she goes. But if you just want to fill, you want to make sure that you're going every two weeks or so, depending how fast your nail grows, because you don't want to go too soon and you don't want to go too long to where your nails are breaking off and popping off and then you're just ending up paying more in repairs for those single nails than you would be for a fill. If you need recommendations on nail places, I highly recommend going on Instagram and looking up pictures and finding people that are in your area and seeing how impressed with you are with their designs and their techniques and contact them to see if they're accepting new clients. If they're not, ask them if they know anyone that they can refer you to or if you can get on their waiting list. A lot of times stylists that will be full hold a waiting list because, you know, clients can be flaky. Clients cannot show up or all of a sudden just drop off or move or get sick or something in their life happens where they can no longer get their nails done. So stylists will often maintain a waiting list that you can get on so that when a spot do opens up, they'll be able to contact you and let you know that there is, in fact, a spot you can get into. Um, another resource you can look into is a school in your area that licenses either cosmetologists or nail technicians to see if they've had any recent graduates that are really good that are working or if they know of any previous graduates that are working that are taking new clients. That's really all that there is to say about nails other than I really just want to emphasize that hygiene is the most important thing. You can get a fungus, you can have nails fall off, like you can lose nails permanently because of infections related to not properly sanitized tools and products. So super important. Don't be cheap when it comes to something like that. Um, and the same rules apply for eyelash extensions. I know a lot of these nail salons are doing eyelash extensions, but it's the same premise. They're not following proper hygiene standards. They're not sanitizing their tools properly. And they are just applying eyelashes with um, either counterfeit or off-market products that are not really meant to go on the eye area. For instance, super glue that's tinted black for eyelash extension glue. It's completely unacceptable. A lot of harm can come to your eyes. God forbid they slip or they poke you and there's some glue on it. So don't be cheap when it comes to these types of services 
because it really can bite you in the butt in the long run. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I didn't really get into depth too much about the types of funguses you can get or um, the types of problems and issues you can have with improperly sanitized tools and off-market products, but just do a Google search um, for nail fungus or nail salon fails or something like that, and I'm sure the images alone will be enough to scare you into not wanting to pay cheap for services. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. Please join me next time on the Makeup Podcast. Um, Looking ahead, I'm going to have a guest, a very special guest friend of mine. On June 4th, we're going to be recording a episode about skincare and holistic skincare to be specific. Sarah Beach will be my guest. She is the owner of Elevate Albany Skin. You can look at her posts on Instagram and she'll be here to answer questions about skincare. So if you have any specific questions you want answered, please feel free to shoot me an email, jenshaughnessy at gmail.com, or you can feel free to message me on Instagram at jenshaughnessymakeup and ask any skincare questions you have, and then I will ask her during the interview. Thanks so much for joining me, and have a great day.